Hello, welcome to another video. This is another trig equation and I'm going to solve it quickly. And remember, as usual, the secret to solving a trig equation is knowing all your trig identities that are relevant to the problem. So, as you can see, I don't know how to manipulate cotangent squared or cosecant squared together to simplify it. So I'm going to take it to a language that I understand, which is the language of sine and cosine, because most of those identities, I think I know. Let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is rewrite each of these terms in terms of sine and cosine. So we're going to say that this is 2, uh, cotangent is cosine, so it is cos squared theta over sine squared theta plus, and cosecant is a 1 over sine squared theta, and you have minus 2 is equal to 0. So now, because I have a 2 here, what I can do is, in, in fact, let's get rid of the denominator, okay? The denominator, remember, sine squared theta, every time you solve an equation, you want to get rid of the denominator or all fractions. So we're going to multiply each of the terms by sine squared theta. So let's do that. If I multiply this by sine squared theta, I'm going to end up with just cosine squared theta on top, which is going to be 2 cosine squared theta. Plus, that's interesting. If I multiply this by sine squared theta, I'm going to get 1. If I multiply this by sine squared theta, I'm going to get 2 sine squared theta. And if I multiply this by sine squared theta, I'm going to get 0. Okay, this is getting interesting. Now, so this is where you have to now recall any trig identity that you know. I know that cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta is the identity for cosine 2 theta. But both of them have twos, so actually, I can actually pull them together. Because some students will freak out and go, okay, um, but this is supposed to be cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. If there is no plus, if it's a minus, then it is cosine 2 theta. If there's a plus, then it becomes 1. So remember to uh, not freak out because it's not plus. Cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta is cosine 2 theta. So that's what I'm going to generate here. I'm going to say this is 2 cosine squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta. Then I put the one in front is equal to 0. Now we can factor the 2 out. So we can say that 2 times cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta plus 1 equals 0. And now we know that this is cosine 2 theta. You have to know this, plus 1 equals 0. So we have changed this very um, cryptic equation into something we can easily solve. So let's get the 1 over and just isolate this. So we're going to have um, 2 cosine 2 theta is equal to negative 1 when this goes over, so that cosine 2 theta will be equal to negative one half. So all you have to ask yourself now is what angle is such that when I take the cosine, I'm going to get negative one half. I always like to sketch. And remember, oh, I forgot to tell you the restriction. We're going just from zero. So we want to restrict our calculation. We would like to restrict our calculation to this so we don't get infinitely many answers. So here, I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And remember, the graph of cosine is like this, OK, from 0 to 2 pi. So you want to look for all the points where you're going to get negative 1 half. As you can see, there, there's evidence. So this is negative 1. Let's call this negative 1. So negative 1 half is here. So you have this point and this point. And if you've memorized your, your um, your chart, you know that negative one half occurs in the second quadrant where this is at 120 degrees or what you call um, 2 pi over 3. So we're going to get 2 pi over 3. And if you go to the next, so this is, look, this is the first quadrant. There's nothing negative about cosine. Second quadrant, you got something. The third quadrant also, you got something. Okay, so we can say from what we have here that our two theta 
will be equal to, the angles that generate these negative one-half values will be, generally for cosine, will be, uh, what did we say again? Will be um, 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Well, it depends on what n is, and we're going to see how many times you can get that between 0 and 2 pi. So it's safe for you to go this way, and then you say, or you can say that 2 theta is equal to, the next angle here is going to be, what would it be? 4 pi. Yeah, it's going to be 4 pi over 3 plus um, 2 pi n. So let's look at it. When n is equal to 0, we're going to have... Um, this will become 0, and then theta will be equal to this divided by 2, which is going to give you just pi over 3. And in this case, when n is equal to 0, this is not going to be there because it's going to be 0, and then you're going to have this divided by 2, so that theta will be equal to 2 pi over 3. Okay, we got one set of answers. Remember, as long as the value you get is within 0 and 2 pi, it is acceptable. So let's go to the next one. When n is equal to 1, we're going to get theta equals, so it's going to be 8 pi over 3, that's 2 pi, divided by 2, that's going to be 4 pi over 3. Let's just write the answer. So you're going to get 4 pi over 3, and we're done. And the next one will be um, when this is equal, we want to see if we can still accept it. When this is equal to 1, you're going to have um, 2 pi times 3, that's going to be 6 pi plus 4, that's 10 pi over 3. And then when you isolate theta, divide by 2, you're going to get 5 pi over 3. Okay. Now, are all these still within 2 pi? Yes, because this is less than 2, this is less than 2, this is less than 2, this is less than 2. So we are good. So all of your answers are these for this equation. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.